Hey, welcome everybody to our next video here. This one um, will be a little bit more focused towards kind of updates on life, uh, stun things. I think got a little bit more serious. Um, you know, honestly, uh, just today for me, it's actually the 30th for me. I'm going to be posting this tomorrow morning. Um, so I kind of just want to give everybody an update uh, what's happening around, uh, maybe calm some nerves a little bit, talk about what's, you know, more important in life than just math. But legally, I'm still required to teach, do you a little bit of teaching. So we'll finish it up with uh, some stuff. So let me just make an agenda. This agenda is more just to keep my own sanity so I can tell you what I'm going to be doing. So the first thing I'm going to go over are the Arizona specific announcements and what they mean. Um, tour of the CDC websites with Mr. Richard's commentary. I'm going to talk a lot about what's going on with this uh, um, disease here. And then the census info, just a couple of things about it. Um, and then we're going to do a small school update, pretty important stuff actually in that school update. And then finally an actual algebra lesson. And I just say algebra lesson because it's going to be the same. This portion of the video will be the same for both algebra one and algebra two. All right, so let's get rid of this and go immediately to the Arizona specific, um, you know, update that went on. So this right here, what I'm looking at on this screen is the executive order by Governor Doug Ducey. He uh, made this official today. A um, couple things. The thing that you care most important about right now is this guy right here. A statewide school closure has been issued it was extended to March 30th, but it actually is now until the end of the school year. So you are guaranteed not to go to school. Um, are you guys, can you not see my mouse on that screen? Hmm. I don't know why that is occurring. You can see this getting highlighted, but you cannot see this getting highlighted. My girlfriend's looking at me like something is wrong. Something is wrong with my freaking computer. You're stupid. Okay, okay. All right, well, I guess that's in the video. Um, anyways, I don't know why this is not highlighting, but the point is, I guess it's one, two, three, four, whereas is down. It says on March 15th, school is closed to the 30th and uh, is now closed the end of the school year. So you're not going back to school. Nobody is going back to school, in fact. Um, later on, there's a thing that talks about private schools that they really want to. They're allowed to resume after April 30th, um, but honestly, no one is going to be going back to school. Um, Basically till August, um, pretty much everyone is done with school uh, and we just have to do online schooling only. However, what this whole executive order, the other parts that are important for you, let's scroll down to it. Um, let's see right here. Therefore, I, Doug Ducey, uh, by the state, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Constitution and laws of the state, including but not limited to blah, 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 uh, blah, 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 effective 5 p.m. today, March 31st, 2020, Arizona shall institute stay home, stay healthy, stay connected policy um, that basically says that you can't leave the house that's that's what this comes down to is you are no longer allowed to leave except for very very specific reasons to conduct essential activities we'll read what essential activities are in a minute um for employment that's none of you guys uh right now um in essential functions maybe one or two of you maybe uh you have a babysitting service that actually might still be part of it but i think most of those are still closed um, utilizing the services by essential businesses. Um, and, but you don't actually have to provide documentation or proof of this, but, uh, you don't want to upset any cops over this though. So. Um, so what are essential activities? Obtaining necessary supplies and services for your family. So you're still allowed to go to the grocery store. Basically, you're still allowed to go to Home Depot if, you know, your, your toilet has exploded and you need to take care of that. But for the most part, they don't want you leaving your house. You're allowed to get medical attention for health and safety, caring for somebody else, engaging in outdoor exercising activities, but only if appropriate physical distancing practices are used. So basically, if uh, you know, you're not going out in a large group, it's literally one or two people um, and you are only walking, hiking, running, biking. You're not looking at your phone. You're not trying to play Pokemon Go. None of that. Not allowed to happen right now, much to my sadness. But, um, you know, that's how it is. Um, you are still allowed to gauge in constantly protected activities, speech and religion. However, most churches are also closed right now. Um, 
basically don't go outside. You're not allowed to go uh, uh, do stuff. You cannot go hang out together. You cannot go have a kickback. Um, not allowed. You, uh, you got to stay home. And the reason why is quite simple. I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this right here. And that is right here. Cases in the United States. I'm on the Centers for Disease uh, Prevention and Control. You can't quite see the entire thing because of my face. But, you know, no, over here. Now it's floating around over here. And you can see Centers for Disease Control and Prevention website. So what is important on this website here? A um, couple of things uh, highlighted. It tells you how many total cases there are. This is uh, our cases that are um, at 4 p.m. the day before. So this is actually out of date, 140,000. There's more than that now, but you know, uh, this is like a day behind. Um, and you can go through which, uh, you know, the state right here, you can highlight Arizona. We got 919 as of yesterday um, at, uh, at 4 p.m. I, I saw already that it's over a thousand on another website, but um, it's a lot of people. You know, it's not nearly as bad as, you know, New York over here with 59,000. Uh, people infected, but uh, you know, we're at over a thousand. So we have to take more serious measures uh, to slow down the spread. And I don't know if you guys remember, but I talked about how there's going to be this exponential growth. That was on the uh, 20th is when I made that video. So I made that video then on the 20th. So on the 20th, it was 18,000 uh, cases. And we are now over here, uh, you know, uh, at 140,000. This pattern right here where it grows like this, this is called an exponential growth pattern. We can't have that. If this exponential growth pattern continues, literally every single person in the United States is going to be infected uh, with, you know, by the end of April, and it's not going to be a pretty thing, which is why they are introducing these new measures to make sure that people aren't um, going to be infecting each other uh, as much. Um, however, what I said before in that last uh, video where I said you're pretty much going to get it, but you're going to be safe, um, still kind of uh, plays uh, into hand. And now that your odds of getting it uh, in the near future go up, I wanted to go over on this website, the CDC's website, what happens? What are the symptoms and what should you be doing? So let's click this guy right here, the symptoms of the coronavirus. There are three main ones, fever, cough, and shortness of breath. You pretty much always have these three things, all three of them, if um, you have the virus. You could easily have a fever um, without having the virus. Um, like my, my little sister was panicking. My mom was panicking about it because she had a fever. It turns out she had strep throat. Okay, so she was okay. Everything's fine. Uh, just a regular old run-of-the-mill sick for a week thing, not, uh, not this guy. Um, so fever, cough, shortness of breath. Really what that means is it's really hard to breathe consistently. So you guys made jokes in my last couple of videos about me coughing. I actually still have a cough, but because I don't have fever or shortness of breath, it's highly unlikely that I have uh, the COVID. It takes two to 14 days after exposure to be exposed to these things, um, which means that even though everything's so scary now, and now they're actually implementing all of the staying home rules, we're about 14 days behind about when everybody's going to start getting it. So... When we were on the 20th and I said, okay, this is what things are starting where you're supposed to be staying home. Well, that was the beginning of it. People were not following the overall warnings. People were still going out. You know, I saw, um, you know, all kinds of pictures all over the place, people doing things they weren't supposed to be doing, but it is what it is. Um, 14 days later is when things can happen though. So this is what you need to be looking out for. Um, what should you do? What, what should you do if you are sick? Let's click this guy right here. I like this one. What to do if you are sick? Stay home except to get medical care. What does this say? Most people with COVID-19 have a mild illness are able to recover at home without medical care. Do not leave your home except to get medical care. Do not visit public areas. So really what this is, if you get this virus, most likely you're going to be fine. It's going to be a little bit annoying for a couple of days. You're probably going to get a mild version of it. It's not going to be the end of the world. Um, but you probably shouldn't even see a doctor unless, unless you have emergency warning signs. What are these emergency warning signs? Let's click this guy here. What are the emergency warning signs? Real trouble breathing. 
pain in the chest, confusion or inability to arouse. Seriously, that's a, that's the thing. Um, blush, lips, or face. Um, so you get continuously red in the face, or you have um, you know you're being confused all the time. Uh, these aren't uh, you know all inclusive. I I just read earlier today on another trusted website that you lose your uh, ability to taste and smell. Um, at times, so that's another possibility uh, that you that could happen. But this is when you seek medical attention, or only these four things for emergency. Otherwise, you're basically just chilling at home. You're you just need to be sick and do your best to uh, not not uh, make it worse. You know, if you need a couple days off of your homework assignments, hey, I got sick. Um, I I and every other teacher is are going to be totally accepting of it because. Um, going back to what I said in my first video, the reality is pretty much every single person in this country is eventually going to get it. We are just trying to do our best to make sure that doesn't all happen right away because you can see what's happening right now in New York if you want to go look at the news over there. But what's going on is, is there's not enough room in the hospitals. Um, they're making a makeshift hospital in the middle of Central Park right now um, because they don't have enough hospital beds uh, for people because too many people are getting too emergency sick all at the same time. But if you spread that out, then there'll be enough hospital beds over the course of the entire year as opposed to everybody in the next month. Um, so that's the key. Basically, if you get sick, it's going to suck for a couple days and then you're going to get over it. Life's going to go on. Um, if somebody you know gets sick, the people you need to be worried about, I'm going to go back to saying what I said before, people over the age of 40. It's really what it comes down to, especially grandparents, older people, people with have, you know, diabetes, severe overweight, anything like that. Um, those are the people who really need to make sure that they're uh, going to be okay. So anyways, I'm done talking about this coronavirus for now. Uh, done talking about it for this moment in time. I want to go on to some more business that's actually super important for you. That happens uh, not today, but tomorrow for you guys, April 1st. It is not an April Fool's joke, but there is the 2020 census. So let's talk about what the word census means and kind of that really quick. I'm going to go to the, the census website. I forgot to bring this up. I should have brought this up right away. All right, uh, the census. So you would you literally just go to 2020census.gov. I guess you guys can't see that right now because my head's blocking it. So let's see, this is the website right here, 2020census.gov. Um, and 2020census.gov is gonna be where you and uh, your parents have to respond. You have to respond to this guy. It is quite literally a requirement if you don't have a response you're going to have a nice little federal agent show up to your house uh, a federal census agent is what they are called and they will come and talk to you about it there and you'd rather not have a person come to your house to do it um, you'd rather just do it uh, online you can do it online by phone or by mail um, what is the census so hopefully everyone's had a survey in their life i mean you took a survey even for my class um, a lot of people had a survey where I handed one out or I did one on Google Forms or whatever, where I made a survey. Um, the census is just like a survey, except it's a survey of literally every single person in the entire United States. The word census itself means survey of everyone. So it is a survey of everyone in the United States. You can actually have a census of like the school, for instance, that'd be if I asked everyone in the school their opinion on something, then I would have a census of the school. But this is a census for the United States. So everybody in the United States who lives here has to answer this guy. Um, it's important for your parents to respond. Um, anyone who lives here is required to respond even if they are not uh, um, documented. Um, even if they are only living here uh, because they can't get back to uh, their country of origin due to the coronavirus situation. Um, anyone who's here needs to answer this, um, the census here. Your uh, answers are anonymous um, in the sense that uh, the government is not going to contact you or use this information against you in any way, shape, or form. So this is a safe place that, uh, to um, um, state truth uh, about uh, who you are. Um, and it's pretty important that you, uh, that you help your parents respond to this. So if your parents struggle with technology or struggle with, uh, English, 
Um, it's really, really important that you help them fill this guy out. Um, they should have gotten something in the mail already that had their census code. And if they lost it, they can always contact um, over the phone um, to respond. So um, responding correctly also uh, gets uh, Arizona as a whole more votes uh, when we respond to things. It also gets just your town more votes uh, for the entirety of Arizona. It, it it's, it's hard to fully explain right now, but uh, every single person that's in the that's in a given area has their vote counted by representatives and the number of representatives you have are determined by how many people are there. So having an accurate count is important. And if you aren't counted on the census, it's kind of like your future vote's going to matter less. Um, so let's make sure that these are all accurate, that your parents do them, that you help your parents out if they need it. Um, yeah. All right. So we are almost done. I'm almost done talking. So we have one last thing that we need to take care of before the actual um, algebra lesson. And that is this guy, the final schedule. So if you aren't aware of this, uh oh, I can't see what I'm telling you guys. And you know what? I need to get rid of my face for this. You can actually see this whole thing. So bye bye face. Okay, I should have gotten rid of my face earlier on this one. Where's the transition button? There it is. Okay, bye face. All right, so uh, let's read this here. This is for our school only. We're no longer talking about the whole United States, just us. Gateway is using Google Classrooms right now, but April 6th, we'll be moving high school classes onto Canvas. So this is our last week right here on Google Classroom. Um, teachers will post their assignments based on the schedule below. So I'm going to start following it this week. That's why I didn't post my video until now. Um, but uh, uh, other teachers might not start following it until next week. If you have a class outside of your grade band that you're retaking and making up, please go to that grade band. Um, if you failed biology 10th grade, blah, 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 it's just saying what to follow. Um, teachers have office hours online every day. I do have office hours uh, every single day. I, I marked this up before. Uh, oh, I guess they changed. Oh, this is a new check and connect. I am out of the loop, man. I should be more in the loop on things. I apologize. Uh, this is different than what we looked at earlier today. All right. Gateway is giving out grades this semester. You must complete your assignments if you want to graduate or move on to the next grade level. That is really, really important. Some people don't seem to realize that if they do not do their Google Classroom assignments, if you don't just copy these, these notes that I'm writing down, I can't pass you. I'm required to show that you have done something. And for those of you who haven't been able to uh, attach their pictures correctly, you really need to like at least email me so I have some version of proof of saying, hey, this kid, they did some version of work. That's what I need right now. Um, when we move to Canvas, it's a lot easier because I can give you quizzes and stuff. But right now, it's just that they do something. So let's look at the schedule together. For my class, this is what I care about. You can look at the other classes later for your other schedules. But here's me, Algebra 1 or 2 for ninth grade. Assignments are posted on Tuesday. And how it's going to work is teachers are going to post everything for the whole week on Tuesday. Then part of the homework, that is to say lesson one, is going to be due on Thursday. Then the other part of the homework is going to be due on Sunday. The reason why it's due on Sunday is it gives me this Monday. All I'm going to be doing on that Monday is grading and maybe helping out people who couldn't get it done in time for one reason or another. So you're going to have all these days in between to do their work. So you, it's assigned on Tuesday and you have Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Thursday, because I'm going to have it due at midnight, no 11.59. Um, so you kind of have three days to do the first lesson and then one, two, three days to do the next lesson. And then in some days, uh, ways, Monday is your day off of math unless you needed help uh, completely. I mean, you're able to take Saturday and Sunday off if you got all your homework done by Friday. Um, this is just a total spaced out way so you don't get overloaded with stuff on any given day. And if you notice, the only thing due on Wednesday is math. And the only thing due on Sunday is math. It seems that the day that you have the most stuff due will be Saturday, so maybe do that on Friday so you have less stuff to worry about, Mr. Ninth Graders. Um, but that is my own recommendation. So again, you have an entire week. Um, I will be online. I don't know if my hours are going to be different than what they had me do before, but 
I was going to be doing 11 to 1 for my tutoring hours. Maybe I should just do noon to 1 according to this guy over here, but I don't know. Let's look at 11th grade really quick. So uh, 11th grade, if you're in this, um, oh, 11th grade also counts Algebra 2. What in the world? I'm so confused. I guess Algebra 2 is rolled into 11th grade here. Anyways, all math is the same anyways. It doesn't matter. Um, I'll let you like sit. I'll just sit this for a second here so you can see it. I believe this is getting emailed out to everybody anyway, so you can look at it on your own. Um, but uh, this is what we are doing. Anyways, uh, I am finally done talking about school updates and everything else. Again, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you're always allowed to email me. Contact me on WebEx. I'm going to get my beautiful face back up on here. I'm going to get rid of this. And we're going to switch over to the document camera. Let's let's get this going here. Let's do the actual homework we're supposed to be doing. Transition. Awesome. Okay. So um, I'm going to pause really quick. So pause of the video resulted in much laughter because I started asking my girlfriend questions about video editing and she thought that I was not talking to her so she just kept making funny faces at me and not listening to what I was saying and uh the end result is none of the information got across and it's now been a good 10 minutes since I said I was pausing the video and actually going to be doing work I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. anyways Let's get the show on the road here. Uh, <laughs> um, all right, all right. So we are going to do four problems for homework. Um, I want to go ahead and review uh, what in the world we've been doing because it's been a solid week since you looked at this stuff. You know, it's uh, been six days since you were given an assignment. So if you're one of those people that did the assignment day, day one on Wednesday, right when it was assigned, you did this stuff, you might've already forgotten about it. So I like to go through our notes one more time, talk about what in the world we were doing, um, and then kind of go you step by step about what's going on. And uh, we'll go from there. I'm gonna mute this mic. Sorry, the focus on this camera was not good. I had to refocus it and it makes this annoying beeping sound if I don't mute the mic. Okay, so uh, let's uh, again flip back to what we were doing before. So let's do that right now. Um, okay, so uh, graphing a parabola is part one. Uh, our essential question was what is a parabola and how can I graph one in a vertex form? So we, we learned that a parabola, we gave ourselves a definition for this, uh, the word parabola, we did it right here, is the shape of a graph of a quadratic function, and it creates the happy face or it creates the frowny face. One of those two guys. It has some important parts. Um, it is a vertex uh, that is the bottom or the top, so it's the very bottom or the very, very top. Um, it has this vertex form, which we'll be talking about more again in just a minute. And that vertex form had a couple important parts. It had three letters that were that really mattered. The A, the H, and the K. The A made it either a happy face or a frowny face. The H is the switching the sign one. It's how far left and right you move. And K is the Y value of this vertex. And you go up and down. And you do not switch that sign. When we actually did an entire example problem, let's go through actually uh, doing this full example. These were not short questions. So we had to graph the equation f of x equals x minus 1 squared minus 4. So what we did uh, with this guy um, was write down what the a, the h, and the k were. So we found that a was positive 1 because it was invisible right there, which means we're making a happy face parabola h was positive one we switched the sign that was a negative so we switched that sign to a positive one and k was negative four just that guy that's on the outside which means our vertex was one negative four this guy this guy step number two we find the zeros so finding the zeros you always set f of x equal to zero so that's that left hand side becomes zero take that negative four add it to the other side 
Um, we did some extra algebra work. I always had fun. My ninth grade teacher would always write the ASA on the side of stuff. He would just do ASA. He would just write ASA like this. And that says after some algebra. And then he wouldn't do any work and just write the answer down. Um, some people did not like that. Uh, and some people feel that I do that. And I hope that I don't. <laughs> I'm sorry. But after some algebra, you get these two guys. Uh, you get x equals 3 and x equals negative 1. And 3 comma 0, negative 1 comma 0, where the two x intercepts. Three, we actually graphed our three coordinates. So we have our three coordinates. We wrote down the vertex and these zeros here. And we literally just played connect the dots and made a happy face. We checked our work to make sure that we had a reasonable looking graph. So we plugged in zero for x and we ended up getting negative three. It creates a neat looking graph for us. Right. So um, now that we've done that, we reviewed that part of the notes. Uh, we actually had. Uh, you know, um, two more examples that you might want to go through again if you would like to check them out. Um, but I'm actually just going to go right on to the homework here uh, so that we can do it. And I want to remind you guys of something. Starting April 6th, when we get to Canvas, I will be assigning quizzes. And these quizzes um, you will not be getting help with. I mean, I suppose there's nothing I can do uh, you know, if you got uh, outside help, you are going to be signing something that says you're not going to be getting outside help, but I won't be able to do anything about it if you are. Um, but I will not be helping you, and there will not be a video for you to just, you know, copy things down. Um, and you're going to be doing them the same way. You're still going to have to write down this information, take a picture of it, and send it to me. So you're going to have to do it on your own eventually, just like a regular old test, you know, in my classroom. So I highly recommend for this video that you do, again, an attempt all as much as you can on your own, and then after that, watch the problem. All of it on your own, watch the problem afterwards. Um, and maybe do it step by step. Maybe you can't remember. You just need, need a little push. Watch the first you know, 10 seconds of the problem, then hit pause, and then go try to do the rest of it on your own. Kind of up to you there. So uh, let's, uh, let's do it. So our problem number one, again, there's only four questions, by the way. That's it, just four problems. Problem number one. Um, I'm going to write it in a different color here. What color do I want to use? Where is my black pen? I can do it. I need black for the actual problem. f of x equals x plus 2 squared minus 9. So I'm going to remind us of those steps off to the side. So um, those four steps, uh, I'm just going to write off to the side over here because I'm going to have some room. So step one is always going to be finding the vertex. So we're going to find that vertex. Step two is find the zeros. Step three is grab. And step four is check. So uh, we're going to find that vertex. And to find that vertex, we're going to, um, and really we're finding the vertex, and if it's a happy face or a frowny face, we're going to write down what A, H, and K are. So A of this problem is positive 1, so it creates that happy face. Um, and letter H is, in this case, we got negative 2. Yeah, um, got to switch the sign. So whatever that guy is, you switch the sign to get that negative 2. And then k is the same sign, so we get negative 9, which means that our vertex is at negative 2, negative 9. Okay, so we have done step 1 of the question. Just because I can, I'm switching colors again. We're going to purple. All right, so uh, step number 2 of this problem. So step number two of the question is finding the zeros. Again, to find the zeros, we're going to make f of x, this guy over here on the left, equal to zero. And we're just going to solve just like normal. And if you are comfortable doing this, again, I'm going to remind you, you should be pausing, trying it on your own, checking afterwards. So we're going to add 9 to the other side first. We're going to take that negative 9, move it off to the left, and we get 9 equals x plus 2 squared. Most people are more comfortable if the x squared thing is on the left-hand side, so we're going to do a little switcheroo. We're going to switch the positions of these two guys.
And then we're going to go ahead and take the square root of both sides. Remember, you got to make two equations, one that has a positive square root and one that has a negative square root. And the square root of 9 is 3. Subtract the 2 to the other side, and we get x equals 1. And over here, you got x plus 2 is negative 3. Subtract that 2 to the other side, and you get x equals negative 5. Um, don't forget here, you do need to have two more uh, little writing things. You got to write 1 comma 0, because that's the whole thing we're doing, a 0. And negative 5 comma 0, again, we are actually finding the 0. Um, and set three is graph. So let's go ahead and graph that guy. Set number three, um, what color am I gonna do? We're gonna do red. All right, step number three. And this, well, it's more like maroon. But all right, we're gonna use our straight edge here. Again, I'm using my little Pokemon bookmark because I couldn't find a ruler. Right, and we got to make our tick marks. We got one, two, three, four, five. We got one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Now here's the deal. Um, we actually have to go all the way down to negative nine on uh this guy. I don't think we're gonna have to do too many more big negatives, so I'm just gonna go ahead and make the negative one go down a little bit more. So we got uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, so now we gotta plot all of our coordinates. I'm gonna do pink for my vertex because that was the color I used there. So we're gonna use negative two, one, two, negative nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. So there's our vertex. Remember that vertex is the bottom point of the parabola, the lowest point of that happy face. Um, now I'm going to use purple for these two guys because that was the color I happened to use. So we got uh, 1, 0 and negative 5, 0. And again, now we want to do our best to make that happy face um, to the best that we can um, in this situation. So let's, let's just see what we can do. Oh, we're using red. That's right. That's right. We're actually, let's just black. Let's go back to the original black though. That's the original problem. So we're gonna go back. I'm gonna go like this, and we're again trying to make it curvy, but still going through all those coordinates. Nice. Step number four is check to see if this is a whole regional problem. And uh, we're gonna do that by plugging in zero uh, into the original. So our step four is our check. So we're gonna plug zero in and see what we get. So f of zero equals, and we're gonna get, we're taking that original equation all the way at the top up here. We're making x zero up here. So f of zero equals zero plus two squared minus nine. So we get two squared minus nine. Two squared is four minus nine. 4 minus 9 is negative 5. And we get f of 0 equals negative 5. So we are looking for 0 comma negative 5 on our graph. And sure enough, we go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Ooh, graph was almost perfect uh, this time looking at it. Um, so if we didn't make any mistakes. Looks nice and neat. There is our graph. Um, I just want to remind people. If you are having any issues with any of the calculation stuff, you need help with the calculator, um, please ask me for help. Uh, I am available on the WebEx. Uh, I'm available on uh, actually Google Hangout if you want to do that, uh, Google Chat. Um, however it is that you want to contact uh, me, uh, we are going to be able to uh, have a communication. Don't try to ask me for Snapchat though, that's not happening. All right. Um, <laughs> Seems for uh, Patreon members. Oh, oh yeah. Oh gosh, that's a little out there. Tears My girlfriend is being inappropriate here. All right, uh, we are gonna go. Fifty dollars a month. Oh my gosh, this is, this is what I have to live with, guys. This is during the quarantine. I'm stuck with this for thirty days. All right. 
Second problem. I'm not upset. Alright. <laughs> Alright. Uh, number two. Um, here we go. G of x equals negative x minus 1 squared plus 16. Same exact stuff. So again, I'm recommending that you try as much of this on your own as you can. I'm going to say right now, the hardest part about this problem is the graph is going to be big if you count by ones. So you're going to want to count by twos. Um, but try it on your own. I'm going to do this problem a little bit faster, a little bit more condensed. If you need more work than this, um, I totally understand and that's cool. But uh, you got to ask me for help. This is one of the ones I'm going to more force you for help. So on this question, I'm going to streamline the process because this is all you really need to show for that step one. So step one of the question here, um, which I'm going to go back to doing in pink. I don't know why I didn't do that again. So step one, um, we have a frowny face parabola because that guy is a negative and the vertex is the coordinate positive one comma 16. So if you notice, I didn't bother writing out the, hey, A equals this, H equals that, K equals that, because you don't have to do that if you got it, you know? If you don't got it, then you don't go back and, and do all the work. It's all good. Number two, step number two. Um, so step number two to this question is finding those zeros. So I got to do uh, zero equals negative x minus one squared plus 16. And I remind you of a trick that I taught before. You don't have to move that 16 to the other side. It's actually better to move this whole thing to the other side to make it positive. And I said I was going to switch colors again. This is purple. It's all purple. Pretend it's purple. Great job pretending it's purple. Okay. And that's minus. It's minus. Come on, Mr. Richards. Get it together. Get it together. Okay. So um, now we got to go ahead and take the square root of both sides, make one positive and one minus. And again, if you're comfortable with it, you can skip a couple of steps here because this is x minus 1 equals the square root of 16. What's the square root of 16? It's 4 x minus 1 is negative square root of 16, so negative 4. And now we got to add 1 to both sides of the equation. 4 plus 1 is 5, and negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. If you need more work than that, you got to ask me for help. I am specifically saying, hey, if you don't get this, you need to be emailing me. Say, hey, Mr. Richards, I don't get it. I need some help. Come into that WebEx tutoring. I'm available so many hours this week and what else am i doing with my time i'm literally just staring at the screen waiting for something to happen um if nobody comes in that's kind of not true I actually just kind of play animal crossing but it's okay uh what am i supposed to do i'm supposed to be tutoring if no one shows up i've only had like two people show up so come on by all right um finishing this up that's five comma zero and negative three comma zero all right um, so we have our three coordinates, 1, 16, 5, comma, 0, negative 3, comma, 0. And this time, because I have that 16 value, I'm going to make my tick marks count by twos. So get my handy straight edge over here to actually make straight lines. And we need to count up to 8 because it's going to be 16. So um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Whew! Okay, too much, too much work. Um, and I just noticed in the last problem, I did not get all my points because I did not label my axes. I'm going to go do that in my last problem. I forgot to do that. Man, all this beautiful work. And give me to label my x and y axis. I didn't put this as a 5 and a 5 over here. Come on, man. Come on. Hey. Right. But again, these aren't counting by 5s this time. So it's not going to be an x and a y and then 5. Because I want to go to 16. So to get the 16, because um, it's going to be way up here, I need to count by 2s. So this is actually 10. Because it's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. If it helps you, you could write out 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative. You could do all that work, but you don't need to. Um, but we're counting by 10s. So we have 1, 16. So 1, 16 is going to be 1, and then 12, 14, 16, all the way up here. And again, I'm doing that one in pink. There's my vertex way up at the top at 1, 16. And then I have 5, 0. 
So five, there's four, there's six, so five is halfway in between. Negative three comma zero, negative two, negative three, halfway in between. And it's gonna be skinny. This one, I'm really not sure where it's gonna end up falling when I do stuff. Um, and I'd rather know. So on this one, I'm gonna show you what you could do to get make it more accurate and find a couple more uh, extra coordinates there. And that is literally just start plugging in more than just zero. So let's plug in a couple of numbers just to make it nice and neat. So this is step three on the graph. I'm actually gonna have to plug in a couple values. So it's like three and four at the same time. So G of zero, that's gonna be negative zero minus one squared plus 16. That's gonna be negative uh negative one squared plus 16 that's gonna be negative one plus 16 that gives you 15. so i got zero comma 15. um and you just need to start finding um some more coordinates after that if you want to but zero comma 15 is here i think i can get a good enough picture out of that then i can kind of know looks like this and then that means also that this guy right here Probably won't be right there. It's going to be nice little. Okay. So I did my step four kind of early that time because I wanted to make sure I got a nice pretty picture, but um, that's all I got to do. So let's do this. Let's go to the next problem. We want to do problem number three now. So problem number three going to be h of x equals x squared minus 25. And when I wrote this problem up for you to do it yourself, I gave a hint off to the side that said hint h equals zero. Um, what I was trying to say is in this problem, you still have the a is going to be that positive one, but h in this problem is zero because you don't have like an anything minus when you just have x squared like that every single time actually h is going to be zero. You don't have anything extra going on right there. I'm going to pause the video super quick. I need a glass of water. All right, guys. So, um, sorry, I had to pause the video for a second, get myself a glass of water. Let's um, continue on. So we figured out that h is zero. Anytime that I have this x squared just by itself, it doesn't have any of that extra parenthesis action going on. Um, let's continue on. K is still the same idea. It's still negative 25. Um, and that's going to create, make this problem a little bit weird uh, on the whole, but it's still going to give us that same vertex value, which I forgot to be writing in purple, but we're going to remember eventually one of these days. Uh, no, not purple. I just think it's pink. It's going to be pink. All right. Pink. So the vertex is 0, negative 25. In some sense, you can think if there's not any parentheses around this x over here, 0 is always part of the vertex. Um, okay, so after that we need to find the zeros. The zeros, again, it's not when the x value is zero, it's when the y value is zero, when the h of x is equal to zero. So let's do that. So that's our step two. That was our step one over here. Step two, we got uh, zero equals x squared minus 25. I'm going to add that 25 to the other side. And again, most people are happy if I rewrite it with the 25 on the right. Take the square root of both sides, and you get x is the positive square root of 25, and x equals the negative square root of 25. You don't have to write that stuff if you're comfortable just writing 5 and negative 5, though. And that's what you get. You get 5 comma 0 and negative 5 comma 0. All right. So uh this graph here if you notice you got 25 here you got fives here it might make more sense to make all your tick marks go by fives and you know i'm, I'm cool with that uh and you've actually already plugged in zero so the check step is not really that important in this problem it's actually one of the easier questions we've done because we kind of just start graphing as long as we got our nifty little straight edge to make it uh, all nice and neat here so we got our arrows going. Oh, I forgot my arrows on all the other questions. I am caught from the team, guys. I am caught from the team. Look at this. I got the arrows on the parabola at least. Okay. We're at least somewhere, Mr. Richards. We're doing okay. We're going to make it through this, guys. Pandemic's getting to me. 
This is that new confusion. I shouldn't be joking about that. More bad meat. Holy Toledo. Alright. Here we are. Okay. So let's uh, finish up one, two, three, four, five. 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 All right. Um, and again, I'm going to start labeling these going by fives, which means that this is 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. And if that's the case, then this is our 0, negative 25 is right here at the bottom. There's our vertex of this parabola, um, with our happy face parabola, because we have 0, 5 is right here. Um, 5, 0, sorry, is right here. Negative 5, 0 is right there. And that's it. Really skinny parabola, this guy. Here we go. Easy peasy. Let's uh, move on to our fourth and final problem. Boom. Number four. And I want to remind you guys uh, one more time before we uh, move on. I really do want you to be pausing the video right when you see the question, after I give you a little hint, um, and try the whole thing on your own. See if you actually understood what was going on. I know it's right at the end of the video, you're probably very bored, 25 minutes in to the algebra part. I don't even know how long the other part was, but um, yeah, let's... Uh, Let's get going on here. Let's pause and let's focus and let's be actually learning this stuff and not just copying what Mr. Richards is writing down. Especially don't be copying that nine that like goes through the next two lines for who knows what reason. All right, so my hint on this guy is the X tick mark should count by twos. So the X's, X tick marks, tick marks by twos, but the y tick marks, oh my gosh, I can't write, by tens. All right, that's my hint on this guy. So again, pause the video, see if you can do this whole problem on your own. Maybe if you can't do a part of it, you only get to that part in the video, you skip a little bit, 15 seconds or so, get to that part, pause again, see if you can finish it. As much as you can do it on your own, that's the best, then you're actually learning. It's more like a whiteboard practice problem than anything else. Okay, so in this guy, we have that frowny face parabola that has a vertex at negative one comma positive 49. So there's our vertex. Our zeros, for solving this equation, we set zero equal to negative x plus one squared plus 49. Because there's a negative in front of this guy, we're going to want to move that to the left. You always want to be moving that negative on these problems. We take the square root of both sides of the equation. We make two separate problems. Again, if you're showing less work than this, that is okay. Completely a okay. The square root of 49 is 7. Subtract 1 on both sides, and you get... 6 over here, subtract 1 on both sides, and you get negative 8 over here. I don't know why I didn't write the negative 1 there, like I was going to, and then I just didn't. So you get the coordinates uh, 6, 0, and negative 8, 0. And now we just got to start making up our graph. Um, so making up the entire graph, we start up with our straight edge of some kind. Anything straight will work. Don't forget to actually include the arrows and your labels this time. We got x, we got y, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And my hint here is the x tick, mark, x -tick marks go by twos. So that's going to be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. But the y tick marks go by 10, so it's going to be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And now we just have to play connect the dots with the coordinates that we have. So we have this vertex here at negative 1, positive 49. 
So these go by twos, so that's negative two, so negative one's halfway in between, and almost up to 49, not quite, just barely below 49 up there. There's our top point vertex. And then we have the six comma zero, that's one, two, three over. We have negative eight comma zero, that's, uh, it was three over by the way, because it's two, four, six, so negative two, negative four, negative six, negative eight. And I don't think we actually need to do a check step on this one if we don't really want to. If you want to, you can make yourself happy, but it's going to be hard to even figure out what the what we've drawn up there. If you do the work, you do get 48, by the way, 0, 48. If you want to do the check step, but you don't really need to do the check step. I think this is a good enough graph for me, especially at the end of the video. Have a great rest of your day, guys. The next video will be posted on um, Thursday for you. Again, starting on Canvas, when we get to Canvas, actually both videos will be posted at the same time, but I don't have it done yet because um, we are just uh, fully informed of doing all this uh, just today, which is actually great. Um, have a good one, guys. Uh, I'll talk to you later. Please come hang out on Tutoring Hours. Bye-bye.